Welcome to the Emotional and Mental Health Summit. My name is Dolores Andrew Gavin and I'm your host. I am the founder of The Mythic Fairy, a dedicated children's website for all things emotional health. I'm also the author of two children's books, an empowerment and assertive coach, a podcaster, blogger and mum. I have two reasons, I guess, for doing this summit and bringing it together. And firstly, it's to support the whole conversation that's already there around emotional and mental health. And secondly, I also want to bring tools to people to show them that, I suppose, firstly, that there are tools that we can use to help us, whether that be learning something like emotional freedom technique or helping uh, ourselves to step into our power by finding our voice. There are lots of different tools I'll share on the summit from the speakers that will be speaking. And also, of course, you also will hear from people who have been on a journey themselves. So it's always good to know that we're not alone and that others have traveled the same path possibly as ourselves. I hope that you enjoy the summit. Thanks for being here. Welcome back to the Emotional and Mental Health Summit. My name is Dolores Andrew Gavin, and in this episode, I am delighted to speak with wellness mentor, yoga teacher, and yoga practitioner, Louise Tyrrell. You're very welcome, Louise, and welcome to the conversation. Thanks, Dolores. It's absolutely wonderful to chat with you as always. Um, I have to say I'm a little bit nervous, even though I teach people about managing stress, but I find it's funny in any situation like this, like it's kind of like a mixture of butterflies in my tummy and then like my nerves tingling a little and I'm never quite sure whether it's excitement or fear or somewhere in between, but um, I am delighted to be here. Well, that's great. You know, I think a lot of people will resonate with that, Louise, even you're starting off and being honest enough to say that because you know what? We're all human and even as practitioners, we do need to have other people help us at times and we do have emotions as well. <laughs> It doesn't mean just because we are a practitioner practicing in this area that we have it all covered. Yeah. So Louise, I suppose starting off, um, I'd love to share your story with people because, you know, this is about sharing stories for people and how we can overcome any emotional upheavals we might have in our life or ways that we can maintain our mental health on a daily basis. And, you know, you had an accident going back to in your 20s. So can you maybe start off to let us know a little bit about that and how your life changed from that moment on? I can, if I can recall back that far. Uh, yes, Dolores, um, I was um, 25, yeah, 25, and I was recently married, had bought a house. Uh, the insurance company that I was working in had just been taken over, <clears throat> and it was a very stressful time, actually, you know, just trying to readjust all of those situations. And um, it was 1992, and before I knew it, the mortgage rates doubled. And I found myself like under terrible stress in work, trying to work overtime to pay a mortgage and just to keep myself financially afloat. I was working extra hours. I was ignoring my health, which we do when we're busy. Um, I was not taking care of myself really, like I was eating on the go and uh, just basically like feeling under pressure. So. I kept saying to myself, like, I'll start next week, I'll start next week, I'll go for a walk, I'll start this, I'll start that. And anyway, I didn't. So one evening, after a very busy day at the office, I was in my car driving uh, and feeling absolutely famished, thinking I'd never get home to have my dinner. Uh, started to rain, turned on the window wipers, which were broken, and I was thinking, oh my God, like, why didn't I get the window wipers fixed? was giving out, giving out to myself about that. Then the lights went red and then I started obviously cursing at that too and stopped my car. But the car behind me, who had no intention of stopping, smashed into the back of my car. And like, I can't recall everything that happened. I just recall like just being thrown forward, banging my head off the steering wheel. Like in those days, the seatbelts weren't fantastic. There was no airbags or anything. And I uh, just banged my head off the steering wheel and I just started to tremble, uh, shaking, I just started to, tears were just pouring down my face. And I was thinking, oh my God, that did not just happen. Mm. And I actually didn't, I didn't know what to do. Like I'd never been in a situation like that before. So um, anyway, 
the next day, like I was had medical treatment and everything, but the next morning I woke up and I was absolutely couldn't, I actually couldn't move in the bed. Um, and from then I ended up like being off work for about, I don't know, it was probably a year. Wow. I to, yeah, I was off work for quite a while. I had suffered a sort of a serious back injury and uh, whiplash to my neck. And when we think about whiplash, like we think, oh, sure, whiplash, like everybody has that. Look, but unless you actually have it, like it was excruciating pain in my back, excruciating pain in my neck. Like any time I went to turn or twist or do anything at all, like it was so sore. And um, because and I was... What were you working in, uh, Louise? I was a life assurance underwriter at the time. <laughs> very, yeah. And um, like I loved my job, I have to say, even though it was stressful. I mean, I loved it. And all of a sudden, here I am at home. And th it's a novelty for a couple of days to be off work, you know, and to be able to just get up whatever you want to and sit in front of the TV but the novelty soon wore off and I found myself like feeling isolated and feeling lonely and I mean I was married but um, I was going for a medical treatment I was you know, on medication which was making me feel even worse and mm. uh, with the result that like my mood went very low I started to uh, I was eating comfort eating uh, obviously um, like and really feeling like frustrated and terrible but a turning point for me, I suppose, was that uh, it was around Christmas this particular year, like well, well after the accident, and I was almost like I didn't want to go to my family for Christmas dinner. I was just too like I was sort of self conscious about myself. I just felt like, oh my god, like I'm just not really up to the, like all the family and everything. So I wasn't going to go, but anyway, I forced myself to go. So I'm sitting at the, at the table. Everybody's there gobbling down another spoonful of trifle I suppose which was absolutely delicious and next of all my grandmother who was sitting like opposite me uh who wasn't very diplomatic just sat across the table to me she said like uh, I think you've had enough trifle Louise and I was going what she goes yeah you've had enough she says you're after getting very fat <gasps> and I, said, I said oh my god like like and like this granny like well, she lived to be 101, so she was probably had, you know, some healthy mind or healthy body. But, like, she was a tiny little granny. And, I mean, she could have actually just in that moment, it was like as if she had just walked around the table mm. and dug something, dug a dagger in my heart because I just felt totally deflated. And I went home that night, and I already knew, like, how bad I was. I mean, I was on a waiting list for surgery in Beaumont Hospital. Uh, but I was pr a public patient, so like that was going to take months. But I was I was meant to have my uh, some spinal work done, like discs fused and all sorts of stuff. And um, but I went home that night and I lay tossed and turned all night. And I was thinking like, oh my god, like something has to change. Like I need a miracle because I just can't obviously go on like this. I mean, I felt actually like I, I mean I I knew I had gained a lot of weight. Like I'd actually put on probably like a few stone. And I thought, actually, at one point I was just going to explode and I felt like totally, totally terrible, actually. Um, even though like I had very good support, like from my friends and family. But I think sometimes like you just bottle it up. You don't really be thinking, you know, like I didn't want to burden anybody or tell anybody how I really felt. So I would often just pretend like I was fine. Like people say, how are you? I'd say, Ash, I'm grand. But really on the inside, like I was actually like really, really distraught. I was crumbling. So. Anyway, I wished for a miracle, probably prayed for a miracle. And the next morning, um, well, it wasn't even the morning. It was probably the afternoon by the time I eventually woke up the next day. Like I'd even gotten to the stage where I was saying to myself, like, why bother even setting an alarm clock? Because there's nothing to get up for in the day. So I remember walking down the stairs and just right in front of my stairs when you walked down was the front door. And I could see a couple of letters on the front door like, that the postman had thrown in. And then it was this like little random slip of paper. And I walked over and I said, like, picked it up and I was going, gosh, what's that? So it was the tiniest little flyer. Like, um, I'll just show you. Like, it wasn't, um, like, it wasn't a poster size. Like, it wasn't even, like, a flyer size. You know the way, like, a flyer is an A5. Like, this was, like, folded again. Like, this tiny, tiny little flyer. And it said, yoga. Why OG? Uh, and I was already thinking, like, when I saw it, I just laughed because I had said, I had only been saying to my family, I said, look, I'm trying to help myself. Like, I'm trying to get better. I have tried the A to Z of therapies. And here I am <laughs> looking at the letter 
why for uh, yoga. Okay. <laughs> like, what to the Z. So the, the, the flyer simply said, uh, relaxing yoga, exercises and breathing. Monday, 10 past nine, and the lady's name, she was Lorraine, was her name. So I looked at the flyer and I was going like, oh my God, like I had heard of yoga, but we're thinking of like, this is the nineties, like yoga wasn't really well known. And um, so I looked and then I just left the flyer like on the counter, did nothing, kept saying, oh yeah, I must, I must ring, I must do something, or maybe that's the answer, or maybe that will help me. So eventually I picked up the phone and I phoned the lady Lorraine and it was great in those days, like I could have a chat with her and I explained what was going on. And she said, look, the yoga, she says, I really believe yoga is going to help you a lot. So I said, well, look, like I'm totally like, I'm actually really, I'm embarrassed. I said to her, I'm totally out of condition. I'm really inflexible. Um, I wasn't naturally fit or flexible anyway, but I said, and she said, look, just come along to the class. And I went to my first class, literally crawled in the room. It's not great that you found somebody that's so yeah. supportive though, really like, you know, I mean, isn't that, yeah. she was that's so, what you need it, like, you know, you need a space, you need someone to hold your whole space for you to actually even make the brave move of doing yeah. yoga that you weren't too sure of yeah. what it was about. Yes. Yes. She, I mean, she really, she was so nice. Like, I mean, she was so encouraging. She explained to me that yoga is not about, you know, you don't have to be able to do anything. You just have to be yourself. You just come along and let's see what happens. And um, she explained to me, she said, like, she said, I, I only, she said, I walk around delivering all them flyers. I said, she said, she just goes door to door. Like in those days, there was no social media posts or fancy yeah. flyers. Or she was just, she had actually done it on a typewriter. Wow. And photocopied it in the local library and just went around the doors delivering them. So anyway, I started doing the yoga. I was embarrassed, first of all, and then I couldn't do what everybody else was doing. Not that there was any, there was no competition really in the room. Anyway, like everybody was just like so nice. And I felt like, I actually used to look forward to going then. I used to be dying, you know, for Monday evening to come around. And even though it was nine o'clock at night time and some nights it was dark, most nights it was dark probably. Like I used to think, oh my God, like, you know, I feel when I'm there, like I can just be myself. I can just lie on the floor. I can just move my legs, move my arms. You know, I can just feel like alive again. And yoga <clears throat> within the space of, now it took a good few months now, all right, but I went back to the consultant in Beaumont and I said to the consultant, I said, look, I have been doing yoga. I'm starting to feel better. I'm starting to feel a lot better. And uh, they did some more scans and he said, well, he said, you can, we can chance actually, you know, continuing with that and not, not doing the surgery. Okay. So I said, I said, oh my God, like really? He said, well, like you're in your 20s, so it's probably better if we don't, you know, if we just take this other option first of all and see what happens. And he was really actually, I mean, I was shocked to think that he was, you know, thinking that way, but he was. And yoga literally, I mean, it saved my life. It brought me back to life. It started to give me confidence. It gave me energy. I was sleeping better. And because of the yoga, then I started to eat better. I start like the weight, I mean, it took a time, but like I did start to lose the pounds. And I was so, I suppose, so inspired by Lorraine. I was so inspired by yoga. I said, I'm going to study, I want to study this more. So the best thing for me to do at that time was to study, to be a yoga teacher, because that was the way I could learn more about yoga. Sure. I don't know if I really had the intention of teaching it, but it was just amazing. Like there was so much to learn about your body, like so much to learn about your health. I mean, and I suppose I realized as well in my 20s, which was lucky, that like your health does matter. Mm. You know, like how you feel. Like at the end of the day, if you don't feel good, you know, it's not going to, you're not, you're no good really. So I was very blessed, I think. And it's great that you say yourself, it's, you were lucky that you had your journey so early in your life <clears throat> so that you could go on and help other people then and then like empathize with them as well, you know, um, understanding what, because back pain is, rampant you know people suffer so much with back pain and it's great that that you know it's great to find a modality a therapy and i think it's is it i would look at yoga even though i'm not a regular um i don't practice yoga regularly but it's so mind body and spirit i don't do it because i just i do other things i guess of course, um, yes. i haven't got into it um yes. talking to you now makes me go mm, maybe i should <laughs> um, i think it, it's worked on the whole body as you say you know, not just the body, but the the emotional and the spiritual as well, which treats mm. us as a whole, really, as opposed to just treating a symptom. Yeah, I mean, it does absolutely. I mean, and to be honest with you, like 
like even when I'm talking with people, like I don't, I'm not a yoga fanatic because like obviously I love other things as well. I think that when, even if people are chatting with me like about uh, movement, about stress, about not feeling great, like I say, like find something that you love to do, whether it's walking or swimming or dancing around your living room, which I like to do a lot. <laughs> I just put the radio on and dance because I think like any sort of movement, just really to shake, you know, yeah. just give yourself a shake. I love dance as well. Um, <laughs> Because it just gets the endorphins going. Like, I mean, it just sort of, you just feel good when you move. Yeah. And whatever whatever it is that you like to do, that's what to do. Like, because, I mean, obviously, like, there's about, like, how many different sports are there? How many different exercise systems are there that we could be doing? So it's to find one that you like, to, that one that you'll be inspired to do and you want to do and to try to do it. Even though, like, I mean, what I find is, and I know it happened to me in my 20s, and it has happened like on one or two occasions since as well, like just other stressful things that happened. But um, like, I think sometimes like you can find, you can sort of feel, and from talking with people, like they say to me, like, I'm just really not fit, or I'm not really flexible enough to go to yoga, or like, I have an ache here, I have a pain here, you know, um, I haven't got the time. And it's amazing, like, I think if you can just take the, you know, like something has to change, like really, you know, you have to just make a, make a decision that you are going to, that you, I think you have to have hope. That's what I think as well, like that no matter how you're feeling or no matter what sort of, you know, state, I suppose we call it, but no matter what sort of condition you've, you've gotten yourself into, no matter how far down the slippery slope you feel that you've actually slid, um, like you can always, like there's always something like to, some or something or somebody like just to grab hold of and just yeah. to, and just to, you know, just to take even a little small step, because even just one small step is a small step in the right direction, you know. Absolutely. And I think you found your, you found the hook there with Lorraine, that little piece of paper. And, yeah. just, you know, you're encouraging people to just find a, a hook like that where they can exactly. find some small bit of hope yeah. when we're going through in the midst of a storm. Yes, yes. So is there, is there a particular type of yoga that you practice, uh, Louise? Because I'm, mm. they're not, I did have, I did go to restorative yoga once. Now I do have my own back issues and that's why I think yoga, yeah. I haven't, I haven't done it enough, but is there one particular yeah. way to practice? Well, I trained in traditional yoga, which is called Hatha yoga. Now Hatha, that word Hatha probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but what, um, like since I've trained in, well, I trained in Ireland, first of all, then I spent some time in America studying yoga and meditation with uh, Deepak Chopra. I studied with him. I studied, studied with Eckhart Tolle. I studied with Wayne Dyer, like all like in-person studies. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And um, Anthony Robbins, Harv Eckhart, lots of them. But like to learn from the people who like I admired, like I feel I was, you know, lucky to go to, yeah. to go train with them with I just had a fascination like with the whole thing. Like, I mean, I, I think as you say, like, it's not just about the body and um, it's about the mind. It's about like the feeling it's about the soul or the spirit. If you, if you think that way, but I think that, um, any type of yoga, like Hatha yoga is the one I did. And since I've done restorative yoga, I teach yin yoga as well. Now, I mean, I teach yoga, I teach a good few classes like every week, but, um, yoga is changing a little bit as well. Like there's a lot of, you know, fast fitness type for your, you know, yogas out there and that's fantastic for people who are looking for that sure i don't teach fast furious fitness type yogas i teach um it's sort of like a yoga where i suppose i've developed my own yoga in a way like you know combined yeah. all the all the different types but it's more of a gentle uh movement now i do all the yoga poses but just in a sort of a mindful way where people really feel what they're doing and like why am I moving my arm that way like why am I stretching my back that way like what's going to work for me and when I'm teaching a class like I always like to I have some sort of a plan in my mind before I get there but when I get there like I within the first few minutes like I'll see who's there like and I'll just know and I'll just sort of pick up on what they need and I always include like everybody in the class like there'll never be an occasion where <clears throat> somebody can't do something because I just won't be doing that that the person can't do and I think that can happen like in some classes, you know, or any, not any type of classes, you know, you want to feel confidence. You want to help people to build their confidence and just to help them to feel good about themselves is really it. Great. So you combine meditation as well? I do. Yeah. I teach meditation and it's, yeah, it's a very mind, it's a very mindful yoga. Now it can be a bit challenging, like for depending on, but it's generally like it's, 
it's excellent for everybody and like people of all ages um are in my class i mean there's a woman uh going at the moment like in her 80s and we'll say like a few months ago <clears throat> i teach you see i do yoga for your hands and feet as well like as well as the body because i think sometimes like in sports we concentrate a lot on the arms and the legs you know building up and we forget that we have hands and feet on the ends of them <laughs> so <laughs> i do yoga for your feet and yoga for your hands and actually yoga for your face as well <laughs> but oh, um, do you do facial yoga yes <laughs> But this woman, I mean, was in the class a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, and um, she, as I say, like she in her 80s, it's an older generation class that I teach. And um, like we were doing this movement for the feet, like, and she couldn't do it. And I was helping her with that, like, but obviously letting her do it herself as well. Like, I, I don't do anything for anybody. But um, as in, like, I don't make anybody do anything, or I mean, I let people just at their own pace. So um, she came up to me at the end of a class a couple of, weeks later and she went she's oh my god she said, I couldn't do any of those foot things at the beginning like just lifting your heels really off the floor and she says and now I can do four wow. like imagine and she's just, like delighted so I think for all ages it's just about moving isn't it yeah but it's also about I mean you hold in that safe space as well that that you said someone did for you in the beginning too because you know I mean if if we go somewhere and we don't feel comfortable and we don't feel I suppose included maybe you know, we might not just go back. We might then give up yeah. and say, oh, it's no good, it's not for me. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. and it's a pity, really, but I mean, this happens, I know, and it's no disrespect yeah. to the teacher or whatever, but like, if you go in like that, that you're giving people, you're, you're mindful of the people yeah. that are in your class and you're mindful that they, they're looked after. I mean, they're going to obviously benefit so much from that because it's an inclusion. And I think it's the connection that you're building is so wonderful with people uh, mm. so that you're allowing them to to have their own healing in their own way well done you oh, thanks. Yeah. well I do love it I mean I do love it I suppose I believe in it so much I suppose because like it did do uh you know it did so much for me so I, I do try to encourage you know but I do encourage people just to do do something that they love that's the most important thing and if you feel like if you're not feeling great like you know just to reach out to somebody like to pick up the phone and I know you've covered like quite a lot of um, like the lot of resources that are available for people or you know throughout the last couple of interviews and through your um, emotional and mental health summit which is absolutely fantastic by the way because Thank you. I think it's amazing that people can you know that everybody knows I mean it's it's mad really because like there's so much more information available now than ever before but people are more stressed than ever before like yeah. it's not even funny um, like I've worked, I mean, with lots of different companies over the years, like teaching stress management skills, but like you just see people are under so much pressure nowadays. Like I remember, like I was in town last week in Dublin city center and in Dublin city center. Now, if you're at the pedestrian lights, they have a countdown clock on the lights. Mm -hmm. So the little guy is red, you know, so you stop obviously. Um, and then like he's counting down, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7. And next of all, this person just flew from behind me like five seconds to go, charged out on the road. Like if you can't even wait five seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like you're, and anyway, I'm not judging that person now, by the way. But I'm just saying like that everybody seems to be, you know, rushing everywhere. Like the traffic, it's, it's nuts. Like, I mean, the M50, the speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour and if you're driving at 100 kilometers an hour people are beeping you to, yeah. to hurry up and people are under like there's just a lot of pressure for people um you know there's we don't even have weekends anymore you know years ago like I mean, you had a weekend off there's no such a thing like i remember uh, when i got married first of all um my husband was out cutting the grass on a sunday or something and the next door neighbor came out like she was an elderly woman and she said like you know she said to him um, oh, no, no, no. he's looking at what, what? And she says, no, no, keep the Sabbath holy. Oh, dear. Imagine, imagine nowadays, like, saying that to people. Like, yeah. I recommend that you sit just on instead of, but you, I mean, like, that's not a possibility. I'm not saying that people need to do that or should do that. I'm just saying that, like, it has changed, like, it has just changed so much over the years and you just see people rushing and, pushing themselves yeah. and I forgot to be mindful on that is there anything actually that you could uh, any anything that you'd like to give us any um tip whether it be facial yoga or something that somebody can do 
you yeah. know, on the fly, let's say, whether they're, whether they're driving their car or and stopped in traffic lights, maybe I don't yeah. mean you yeah. while you're driving yeah. your car, but yeah. you know, something that we can do in our busyness to sort of, to make a connection to stop or whatever. Yes, there is. Great. Well, I'm going to, yeah, no, and thanks for asking me because this is, um, this is something that I recommend that absolutely everybody does every day. And it's like, it's going to, like some people are just going to go like probably have a laugh now at this, but nowadays we're using our hands more than ever. As I was saying, like even about the bodies resting on a Sunday, like before mobile phones, mm. we were sitting down and when you sat down, your hands rested. Now, if you think of all the thousand things that your hands do every day without even the phone, like the tension that's building up when you're even pouring the kettle, the tension that's building up when you're brushing your teeth, the tension that's building up when you're driving your car, you're typing, like you're just in the normal everyday activities, hoovering the floor, washing the dog, you know, whatever it might be. And nowadays, like people's hands aren't receiving any rest at all because when you sit down, the phones are coming up, you know, and people are, you know, like switching across their phones and, you know, checking everything and typing and texting and gosh knows what. So in the same way, and this is just my belief, but in the same way that now there's queues in the hospitals and waiting lists for hip replacements and knee replacements, like in the future, all this overuse of your hands, who knows? Do you know, like, I mean, you can even see in kids nowadays, like their fingers are, their knuckles and everything. So anyway, if everybody's up to it, or if you're up to it, Dolores, we'll have a go at this, okay? And I do recommend this every single day. It's, it's going to involve your hands, okay? It's just great. Like, it's fun. I'm holding so, my microphone here, actually, because I haven't it down, so I might not be able to. It's just going to take, no, it's just going to take, we'll do one hand then, because I just want to show you, one, one hand is good. So if you just take your right hand, and just t take your right hand, and place your right hand out in front of you, and just glance down at your hand, first of all, and notice your hand, and notice how many fingers you have, and notice your thumb. And when was the last time that you noticed your hand, that you even, you know, hello hand? So now we're going to do some movement for the hand. So we're going to start by just pulsing the fingers in and out. And this generates energy in the hand. So if your hands have been working hard and building up tension or tiredness, this will just like loosen them up a little bit. And then we're going to roll out your wrist and just roll your wrist just nice and gently. Just now it's not an exercise for your hand. This is actually just to loosen away any tiredness or tension from your hand after all its busyness. And then roll your hand in the opposite way. And just begin to notice your breath as well as you're doing that, because sometimes we hold our breath when we are concentrating. Mm. And then just roll your hand around again in the opposite way. And then once more in the opposite way, same hand. And now just spread your fingers and try, see if you can stretch all the way into the tips of your fingers. So feel the stretch from your wrist all the way into the tips of your fingers. So just the same way as you would stretch any muscles in the body, just stretching into the tips of your fingers and then release that stretch and then stretch again all the way into the tips of your fingers and release. And once more, all the way into the tips of your fingers and release and then you love this one so just give your hand a floppy shake from your wrist so just flopping out and then out to the side i often say to people and then just wave bye bye to any tension or tiredness in your hand or your body and just continue to flop and your hand is not going to fall off nobody's have done yet and then love just it. rest that hand down with your palm facing up just notice how it feels and then notice your left hand and any difference. So how does your right hand feel, Dolores? Yeah, I just, I can actually feel energy in it. Yeah. yeah. And actually with my right, I do have a little bit, I, I have a tendency of getting a little bit of carpal tunnel at times from typing very fast. And that. Yeah. yeah. And what you have experienced there is, and I mean, I recommend like anybody who would who would like to <laughs> to do that like with both hands obviously your right hand and then your left hand or even your two hands together um like every day like probably even just once or twice a day so that your hands can release that build up of tightness and tension that's happening without us even realizing 
you know, so that you can just generate that energy that you're speaking about. And that energy that you feel in your hand now is exactly what you feel after you practice yoga. Because you're doing yoga in that mindful way, you're moving, and as you're moving, you're generating energy, but you're also releasing any tiredness or tension mm. so that your body starts to feel relaxed. Now, sometimes people think that relaxation is the opposite to energy. But when we speak about relaxation in yoga or even just relaxation in general, you're not talking about like, you know, plonking on the sofa in front of your favorite soap. That's not relaxation. That's not your body relaxation. That might be relaxing and that's fine. But relaxation is actually the opposite of tension. So when you can let go of tension or tiredness or stress or strain from your body, your energy flows more freely. And if you do, it's fantastic. And if you don't, then what's happening is that you're knackered by Friday. You're knackered maybe by Monday evening. Do you know, like people are falling into bed, like absolutely shattered from their day because they haven't done any, anything like just to even, you know, release the tension or the tiredness. You haven't taken a moment for yourself. It doesn't have to be like a whole hour on a yoga mat or a whole hour in a class or anything like that. Like what you want to find is like just little things that even just like that, the hands, you know, moving your feet, like wriggling your toes, rolling your shoulders. This is a really good one to do when you're stuck at traffic lights. I stopped at the traffic lights, obviously, uh, just to roll out your shoulders because that helps your shoulders and you just go nice and gently. And this is helping your shoulders to release any buildup of tension so that it stops building up. And what's wonderful is that when you roll your shoulders or shake out your hands or your feet or your arms or your legs or whatever and you actually let go of that tension that's exactly what's happening you've let it go mm. you come back it's not like you know it's like a, a boomerang and it's going to come back into you it's actually gone and when, when it's gone out more might build up of course like but that's at that part that's gone and then when we're keeping the bodies you know healthier you're keeping your body younger i suppose as well like there's no guarantees with anything but Obviously, like it's just about you know feeling good, isn't it? At the end Absolutely. of the day, Absolutely. Just to feel, and you'll feel so much more alive. I mean, if your hand can feel alive after like like two minutes, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Out, your body will just feel amazing. I love that, Louise. Thank you so much. So, can you tell us a little bit about? Uh, I know the time is moving on, but can you tell us a little bit about facial yoga and what's that about? Because I I see a little bit on Instagram a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, you see people. Is that, again, to get the energy moving in the face? Um, I just find it fascinating because it's not something that would have been around a while ago, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, facial yoga has the same, it's the same idea. Like, I mean, if we think about um, our thoughts, like, you know, it's said that we have, well, when I studied stress management in the 2000s, like, we learned that there was 80 to 100,000 thoughts. You had 80 to 100,000 thoughts every day. Now, if you read about stress management or the mind, it said, you know, it's 80 to 100,000 thoughts every day. So our thoughts are increasing. Now, I've never counted them, so I have no idea which one is correct. But we imagine, you know, that we think our mind is here, like just here. Like, so a lot of people who are filled with anxious thoughts or, you know, worry or stress, like they'll, they'll be nearly squeezing. You know, like you can see people, some, like, you know, frowns developing. You can feel them sometimes in your forehead developing. Or your eyes might be tight or your eyes might be sore. Um, a lot of people suffer with, um, and I used to as well, like in the past, um, suffer with, uh, you know, clenching your jaw, even mm -hmm. during sleep, where you don't know, you don't realize it. Um, I suffered with that for years because when I was in school, well, actually, when I was, yeah, when I was in school, like I actually suffered a lot with tension headaches. Um, I used to go home, from, like I'd go home from school for my lunch and then I'd be on the way back into school, like, and I just have the most terrible headaches when I was in school. And I think I was just really stressed about exams and everything and it was always worse at those times. But um, so I know that like if you clench your jaws, like it's not very good for your face or for your head or for your neck. So a lot of people carry tension or tightness in their faces. And the idea then with the facial yoga is that you just relax, you know, you're just learning. And what's wonderful is that when you learn these skills, you can then just sprinkle them through your day. Mm. Without being any special equipment like you don't have to like I know there's all this fancy yoga gear I'm not into that myself now I just go you know just I'm not into all the, the showy yoga stuff at all but it's just yoga is just yoga is just a word really isn't it I mean it's a system yes of course but it's for everybody all ages all abilities 
And um, when you can learn to relax your face and you, you do like little, you know, tense your eyes and then just release them. And it, it's amazing how your eyes like nearly feel like sparkling diamonds in your head. And anybody can do this, um, you know, clench your jaw and then release it. And just, it's actually like a facial. Mm. You've just done it yourself. So from the comfort of your own home, you know, without having to look for parking somewhere or, you know, drive a half an hour somewhere, you know, you can just do these things. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks so much. But if somebody does want to park their car and go and visit you and do a yoga class with you, <laughs> where can they find you? Well, I do. T- I teach um, classes in Dublin in um, at the moment in Malahide and Swords, but um, I am going online soon. Fantastic. And, um, Tell us more. Yeah, so people have been asking me for years, actually, and a lot of people um, are in the same situation that I've been in over the years, like where I decide, you know, I'm going to take up a new hobby. And I sign up, you know, for, I mean, I've signed up, I remember signing up actually for a gym a couple of years ago. And... Um, I paid my annual membership and when my membership was being renewed the next following year the lady uh, called me on the phone and she says to me Louise I'm just checking do you want to renew your membership and I said gosh I said I don't think I actually made it there very often and she said well she says yeah she says you were here 21 times in the year I said yeah and most of those times were actually I was just going into the little coffee shop to meet my friend for a coffee oh my god so, yeah so yeah. many of us like sign up for something yeah. I remember years ago joining the badminton club and going out and buying the badminton racket and the shuttlecocks and everything and then I just never went mm. you know trying to find the time trying to fit everything in so uh, people have been asking me for years um you know will I teach online and I often like at the beginning when I was watching even some yoga on you know on the online channels myself like I was I actually was thinking that's not very safe because how can you be in a yoga position that maybe, you know, your head is facing the ground. Yeah. Brain is in front of you or it's over to the side and you're turning your head or twisting your body, like to try to catch up. And I, so I always, like, I never really was, I was never really fond of it now, to be honest, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, it's going to be for beginners. So there won't be any fancy movements (laughs) to start anyway. And I'll, whoever's you know wants to join will be joining online and i'll be going live like probably once a week or whatever and teaching the group and then taking questions so that i can keep up with their their needs really brilliant so it's almost like um it's 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 interesting going to your class but you're back in the computer exactly (laughs) Exactly. it's going to, to going to a class from the comfort of your own home you know so that you don't have to worry about being there or paying up and not and not being able to go or whatever so yeah, so I'm excited about that. I'm nervous about that, but um, I'll, I mean, it's what I love to do. So absolutely, and I think it'll just, you know, people will either love it or, you know, if people want to do it, they'll do it. Absolutely, and that's but, the way it is. A lot of people will will be delighted with that. Um, especially I think too, moms, and will they be recorded then maybe as well? That if um, oh, it's going to be a full yeah. thing yeah, because um, everything will be recorded we'll be going we'll be doing some live classes but also i'll have pre-recordings of certain specific things so say for instance like dolores you mentioned your back so like if somebody says to me well i have you know a pain in my back and all this stuff you know try to find out like well what's going on for that person and then i'll do like a little video for you know back hair which Mm. i've done in the past not videos but in classes you know like special snippets of how you can help your back or how you can help your neck or how you you know what's good for what so there'll be lots of, or there'll be loads of content once I get going. <laughs> oh, that's phenomenal. And fair play to you because, you know, yeah. I do remember the times when, when babies are, if, if we're mothers and that's, the, you know, we all have challenges whether we have kids or not. But like, if you really want to get fit after having children, yeah. you can do it when the baby's asleep, even though I know that should, that's the time we're told to rest. But, you know, sometimes something, doing something like yoga is very mindful anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I can only imagine it being something lovely if somebody was, you know, wanted to get back into shape or they just felt themselves, they wanted a little me time uh, and they can have Louise in their home. How wonderful would that be? <laughs> well, it will be, no, I have to say, like, in all honesty, like, it will be wonderful for anybody. It's because, like, I'll also be doing every now and again, there's a, very, um, a new yoga that has, you know, it's popular now. It's called Yin, Y-I-N, Yin Yoga. Now, I studied this, first of all, in 2006 in America. Um, but it's 
becoming more popular now, but it's actually a restful, restorative yoga. So it's ideal before you go to sleep. Oh, so wonderful. It puts your body into a nice, calm, you know, calm. But another wonderful thing that's um, good to do is, and you probably know yourself, Dolores, um, like if you're feeling like if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're feeling stressed, you know, just in the mo- in a moment, like it's just to, you know, to stop in that moment and just to even tune into your breath and just to, mm. you know, just to allow your eyes. I mean, some people don't find it comfortable to close their eyes. Like that's another thing with the, some of the meditations online is that like you're told, you know, you have to sit straight and <laughs> like I remember going to the chauffeur center, like to learn meditation and like you had to sit like this and, cross your legs in a certain way and like to hold your hands in a certain way and I was going like oh my god I don't think I can stay like this yeah. and then like I have to meditate as well like I've just to be still and to be silent and I actually found it really I just thought I was going to die actually a few times I said oh god I just can't do this so when I'm teaching uh, meditation I just encourage people just to sit or lie down comfortably eyes open eyes closed whichever is comfortable for you and just to you know, just to allow yourself even just to tune in to your body, just to, you know, maybe soften your shoulders, notice your breath. Notice oh. your breath. <laughs> or watch your breath flowing in. Just watch your breath flowing out. And it just has a very calming and soothing effect on you. And I have used this in so many situations myself, and that's how I know, like, it helps. It just helps in a moment. Um, I remember the year that my dad, like my dad passed away a few years ago, but I just remember like even the night that I got the news that, you know, not that he had passed away, but the news that like he was, you know, had terminal um, Mm -hmm. cancer and like he was in hospital. And um, I just like, I mean, I was kind of, you know, switching from like shock and like shaking and everything. And, and then like, I just, you know, you just have to, it's about really finding something that just helps you to feel settled. That's the way I describe it to people is that like whatever it is that you have, like whatever tool you have in your toolbox, it just helps you just in that moment, no matter what it is, because life is going to happen. Like, That's for sure. Me, you know, um, it's actually, well, this isn't even funny, this one, but um, like when my dad did die and I remember standing at the, uh, just we're all in cemetery or, and like my dad's coffin is just about to go into the ground. And like, I just remember looking around at all my family and thinking, oh my God, like, you know, we're just all like in shock. Oh, we're just all like, I just could see all their faces. Like, and we all, ha- we were all holding these sunflowers because my dad loved sunflowers. So instead of roses, like we all had a sunflower uh, to throw onto the coffin. And um, like, I was absolutely in bits that day, as you would be. And, um, and just as I was walking back to my car or back to the, the big black car, um, which is they're very daunting anyway, I think. Um, but um, just as I was walking back, an old friend, like who I hadn't seen in ages, walked over to me to offer condolences. And um, she just says to me, oh, and by the way, this is, you know, so-and-so. And I just said, oh, you know, hi, thanks for being here. Like, it's, and it's nice to meet you. And I remember her friend just said to me, she said, she says, oh, sure, you'll be grand. I've heard all about you. You know all the answers. Mm. Grand. And I says, and I was just thinking to myself, like, and I didn't say it to her, I said, I'll be grand. I said, you obviously have no idea how I'm feeling. I will not be grand. I'm actually, like, even though, like, I'm, you know, you know, smiling and putting on a brave face that day because that's what we do. Like, I was actually in bits inside, like, falling apart. I wished I was... I died myself actually because I just didn't know how to cope with that situation at all but like it's funny how sometimes people think mm. that because you're the person that helps people that you just know all the answers but absolutely fact, like you know like I use what I teach and that's how I know it works because like whatever situation I'm in if I'm waiting in you know in the dentist which I don't particularly like <laughs> or if I'm <laughs> If I'm waiting on a bus, <laughs> I'm feeling impatient. <laughs> you know, what I do is I try to use those opportunities now to actually just, to, you know, to close my eyes or to leave them open and just breathe so that I do feel settled. And that's exactly what I encourage people to do. Oh, that's wonderful. Just to, feel, just to you know, just to, yeah. to feel settled. It's not to, life is not going to be all, as we know, all rainbows and roses every day. I think it's unrealistic to expect yourself to be, 
happy all the time or to be like you know delighted with life or to have to pretend that you have to be delighted with life i think there's too much pressure nowadays as well with social media you know people are posting like happy faces and they might not be happy they might be just they might just have a happy face for the post and then like it's putting pressure on other people you know to so i think to be you know to be honest with yourself and to be like to reach out if you need help whether it's to you know to phone a friend or to you know just to to, to use whatever resources are there like there's always you know there, there's always hopefully something there's always something that can help you and that's I think if you can, if it's not a friend or a family member, whoever it is, but just just to reach out, like if you need to, because there's always, I think nowadays, like there are people there to help everybody. Well, that's great, Louise. Thank you so much. And tell me, what website will I direct people to if they want to contact you? Oh, Dolores, I don't have a website. Oh, that's fine. Well, then maybe a, a Facebook page. Not we don't, don't need one. It's great, that, <laughs> it's great that you don't need one, actually. Fair play no. to you. know, you're, you're well. probably get a lot of them. <laughs> Well, it's that and also that um, technology and me are not, uh, you know, um, like I'm from a time where you went to a local shop to make a phone call. So yes, likewise. Having, having laptops and mobile phones and everything, I'm just getting used to it all still. But um, yes, I do have a, I will have a website soon. Um, and my, I have a Facebook page. It's called um, Zen, ZEN Life yoga wellness retreats because retreats is something else i uh, do and also um i have recently recorded um a meditation Brilliant. A meditation for stress relief it's going to be released soon and if anybody would like a copy it's free it's a free it's a free resource so it's free it'll always be free and um, just you can just please send me a message, maybe send a message through the Facebook page or just contact Dolores or contact me, um, Louise, T-Y-R-R-E-L-L, uh, Tyrell or Tyrell or whichever way you want to pronounce it, but um, you'll find me somewhere. And um, everybody's welcome to the free meditation. Um, it'll be released, but you can, it'll be released soon, but everybody can have a copy of that. Well, you're so kind. And I will, I, I have a link um, under or beside the, um, the, this video on, on the website anyway on your page so I direct people to wherever they want to be directed to so Zen Life Ireland I think is yours all right on Twitter as well I know I connect yes. with you on Twitter as um, well yes it's um, Zen Z-E-N Life and then a capital I and a capital E actually capital that's e. what it is on Facebook as well that's Zen right. Life capital I capital E yes. I remember it now actually yes. so, <laughs> thank you so much for being part of the summit I really enjoyed the conversation and I think thank it's great you. to talk about and you've given people really simple <laughs> things to do but sometimes the simple things are the best things because as you say we don't have to go out and get the fancy this that and the other you know it's the simple it's the simplicity of allowing and being aware of just that we need to release the stresses of a day mm. without going to bed wrecked if we could do that maybe if we could roll our hands if we can roll our shoulders wherever we're holding our stress tune into our body and release it so that our night's sleep might even be better we're not holding on to the the tension of the day so that when we get up tomorrow we can start a little bit more fresher and even though the day might throw lots at us yeah. at least we're not carrying yesterday's energy with us as well exactly that's exactly it that's exactly what i say um like th this what i do like i help people to change the course of their health so that they wake with energy and enthusiasm to enjoy every day and live life with ease as much as you uh -huh. can and that's but all you can ever do make the most of every day regardless <laughs> fantastic thank you so much louise i really enjoyed the conversation with you and uh people will have the link should they wish to work with you further or to get your free meditation which fair play to you for offering people absolutely I'll talk to you soon thank you dolores have a wonderful evening you too